gonna pull out the beans first. Okay, well, that is pretty warm. So right in front of us here is a steam vent that was naturally created to expel steam and heat from an underground mine fire burning since 1962. It's one of about a dozen vents here on the mountainside. And after visiting here a few times, I asked myself, I wonder if there's a way to harness this heat for something good. So today we're going to do a little bit of an experiment, something that, as far as I know, has never been done before. We're going to try to cook ourselves some lunch using the heat from the underground mine fire. Curious what the results are going to be? Well, me too. So come along with me and we'll find out together. Quick update, this uh, vent hole is not expelling the heat and steam like it was in previous visits. It's very little coming out, if any at all. Seems like the fire is not under this direct point. But the good thing is if you look there is steam coming out in other areas. So we're gonna to move to one of these new holes here. We'll do some temperature readings and we'll see, to see if it is indeed warm enough to cook us up some food. So joining me today too is RJ78 Productions. He's currently scanning with my temperature gun to get a couple readings to see what we can find as the hottest one. And you can see all the snow in this immediate area is melted because of the constant outpouring of heat and steam. Okay, so we got ourselves situated here on the mountainside here. I do apologize in advance that some of the footage is not up to par. You guys are basically sitting on top of a steam vent with steam rising rapidly, and it may interfere with the camera a little bit. But behind me here is our cooking vent. This is one of about 12 vents, as I mentioned, on the mountainside here, just on the outskirts of Centralia. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, most of you are familiar with Centralia. But if those of you who are not and just crawled off under that rock, I'll <laughs> explain it briefly. Centralia is a small town in Pennsylvania that was basically wiped from existence due to this underground mine fire that's been burning since 1962. It was started accidentally uh, in an open landfill pit, ignited a vein of coal, and they never were able to extinguish it. Now, the town still has about five residents that live there, and the fire itself no longer burns under Centralia, but it's just about a mile outside of town where we are today. So. Depending on when you come here though, the vent locations and the temperature readings do vary. I've been here in the past and there's a vent hole behind you guys which I'm going to roll some footage right now showing RJ over there. He was getting some readings. In the past I've topped out over 200 degrees with my temperature gun. And the one right, right here, let me double check it. Oh, it went up some. 113. So it's not as hot as typical days. 
The one that we started out originally, we used to get a readings around 140. Now it's only around 40, 50 degrees. So the fire is constantly moving. Depending on when you come here, you may see steam in different areas. New vents may open, other ones may stop being used. But the outside air temperature is around 18, 19 degrees. It's actually a chilly day. Good thing is it's not windy, so it's not too bad. And believe it or not, sitting here, I'm actually really comfortable. My feet are against a rock, which is keeping my feet nice and warm. The heat behind me here is keeping me warm, so I'm actually quite comfortable despite being 17, 18 degrees out. He came much more <laughs> prepared than I did, though. He's got coveralls and fire boots, fire boots and <laughs> I don't have that fancy, fancy stuff. So location and time of year will impact the temperature. Now, obviously, these readings are at the surface. The deeper down you go in the ground, the te temperature is going to rise. It's going to get upwards of several hundred degrees. Being 113 degrees, it's not enough to boil or to significantly cook or bake anything. But we came with that idea in mind. So what the plan is in here, I do have a pack of hot dogs. I'm going to wrap them in some foil. We're going to steam them, hopefully in the foil, in the mine vent. I do have a can of baked beans. I'm going to put that in my little camping pot. Again, we're going to put it in there, leave it for 30 or so minutes. And I think it's going to warm it up enough to be enjoyable to eat. It's not going to be eating cold food. It won't be piping hot, but I think it'll be enjoyable enough. On top of that, though, RJ did bring a meal for himself, which we're obviously going to share. This was given to him and myself, obviously, from um, our friend Dan. He gave us gifts when he met us in Altoona. And some of the gifts were these ready meal packs. This is called APAC Hearty Beef Stew. It's almost like a military meal, ready to eat. It actually self-heats, self-cooks itself. All you need to do is add water. And the way it works is it has like um, a heating element similar to like those hand warmers you put inside your gloves, you activate it, it generates its own heat. That's how this works. So he's gonna be responsible for that. I'm gonna be doing the hot dogs and beans and once everything's ready, we're gonna have a enjoyable lunch here on the outskirts of Centralia. Now, like I said, I don't know if this has ever been done before. This is either, either gonna be a success or a fail. But regardless, it's going to be a fun little experiment. And I'm pretty hungry, so we're going to get ready and get started to start cooking in the mine vent. Me too. So as I unpack, I did bring a hot dog buns, of course. Aluminum foil. I also brought a blue tarp here that I'm sitting on to keep myself nice and dry. Here is my camping pot. This is where the beans are going to go in. Got plates and bowls. And some Bush's Best Original Baked Beans. Bush. Hey, somebody's dropping snow on me or they're blowing their nose. Inside here I do have a pack of Bar S, Classic Franks are some of my favorite ones. They're only a dollar a pack at Walmart. And they taste better than Ballpark, I think. And we do have uh, our condiments here, ketchup and mustard. He did bring drinks. He brought in an assortment of Mountain Dew flavors and some Diet Coke to not only suit my liking, but to match his truck. <laughs> also have some plastic utensils. I did bring a trash bag with me to take all of our garbage with us. And most importantly, a can opener. Otherwise, we won't be having any beans. All right, so RJ is going to get water out of my car so he can start with his food element. I think the beans probably will take the longest. So I'm going to start with those first. Gonna get them cut open and poured into my camping pot here. Now, once I do have everything kind of in there cooking, I will probably use one of my cameras. I brought a couple to give you some close up views as to how it's situated in there. But for right now, we'll keep it on this orientation so you can see what I am doing here in preparation of our meal. And again, I do have a trash bag, so nothing will be left behind. We're gonna Take everything that we brought in, which is the right thing to do. Okay, so got that opened up nicely. Oh, this one has chunks of bacon in it, my favorite. We're gonna pour it into here. Nice, hearty, thick beans with bacon. Now that it's warmed up, it's going to be good. There's enough here for both of us. Okay, so there is the beans. I don't want to spill them, but they are in there. 
Trying to put the lid on it. And this has a locking lid, which I like. So that locks it. There is vent holes on top, but at least the lid won't fall off. So I'm gonna stick it in there and uh, see what happens. Okay, so I know you can't really see it yet, but the beans are in there as far as I could get them. I kind of have it wedged in there, so it's not going to tip over anything. And there's a nice kind of blast of steam and heat coming out of it. Now we need to work on the hot dogs. So we're going to open them up, put them in the foil, seal it up, and I'll stick those in as far as I could too. Let me do a double check here. There is a couple different holes here. Okay, it's only 60 some degrees there. So we're over 100 back there. So I'm gonna keep everything in that position there. The ground's a little warm. The bag of buns is actually steaming up on the inside. <laughs> That's pretty cool. The only problem is I'm on a slant here, so I need to Probably do this on my lap here so I don't lose the hot dogs. Okay, so I got all of two that we ate in this packet here. And I'm gonna shove it in the hole and um, then I'll give you guys an interior view the best I can. And then I'm gonna help RJ if necessary to get his going but this is going to sit here for at least 30 minutes obviously we're not going to keep it rolling the whole time but we will we'll check in from time to time to see how it's doing I'm going to stick these way in there so here's a look from the outside I'm going to stick you in there in a moment but it's going to fog up the camera but the hot dogs are there on the left beans are on the right and they're going to sit there and hopefully get up to close to 100 degrees just to show you, it is indeed pretty hot in here. Just a quick update, the food is doing Quite well in there. I haven't taken it out yet. The pot is covered in condensation. It's just soaking wet, and it looks like it's getting an ample amount of heat and steam. So we're gonna check them on, in a, check on them in a few minutes. Take a peek inside. Maybe give them a temperature scan on the inside. RJ is over here trying to do a science experiment. <laughs> <laughs> this ready to me ready to eat meal is more complicated than we thought. There's a lot of instructions and steps you got to take. But I think we'll be, you know, we'll see it through to the end and hopefully have some beef stew. We do have the water. He has the heating element. Now he just has to follow the steps to get everything ready to cook itself. So I guess uh, next time I bring you guys back, we'll do some peeking inside to see what the beans look like. See if there's any amount of steam coming out and give a temperature scan to see if they warmed up. Anything above 18 degrees is going to be good, so I'm hopeful. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes or so. I'm going to pull out the pot first and give it a peek inside, give it a scan. We'll see what the temperature is. Ooh, it's quite warm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, ooh, 80 degrees. Wow. Nice, 81 degrees. So yeah, that is the uh, beans themselves. They warmed up quite nice. Gonna leave it in there a bit longer. We should get close to 100 and it'll be ready to eat. That is pretty awesome. It's actually working. So I gave them a quick stir. Help distribute the heat. I'm gonna seal it back up. I learned how to work this. There 
the hot dogs i'm gonna leave there until they're done because there's no reason to check them i know they're going to be warm enough because they're actually in there further so i think another five ten minutes how much longer on yours do you know so he has another six to eight minutes to go on his. It takes a total of 12 minutes to cook. And by the time his is done, ours will be ready to eat. So it's not going to be the best, you know, scenario for sitting here eating comfortably. But we're going to make do, like I said, I have bowls, plates, buns. And, uh, you know, it's going to taste good at least. So... Here we go. It's open to present time. If it'll come out of the curtain. You know, they did say not to touch the bag because it is hot. And that is true. The elements are a little toasty. So basically, there's the meal, and then in here is the actual element. See it, but the salt water that comes with it activates it. I wonder if I should put it back in for a little bit. Get the other side. This side still. <clears throat> Give it just a few more minutes. So as you probably heard and saw, RJ did check on his beef stew. It is about... 90% done. There was a small section where the heating element didn't heat it up properly. So he actually kind of put it in the opposite way to get that section cooked. But while we're waiting for that, we're going to give his a few more minutes. We're going to extract our food and start chowing down because uh, we got beans and hot dogs. And I think they're about ready to eat. So I'll let you know how it is in just a moment or two. So we do have some preheated buns, courtesy of the mine fire. They are kind of steamed up inside the bag here. Gonna pull off the beans first. Okay. Well, that is pretty warm. And there's actually steam coming out of it. We actually succeeded. Let's see, final temperature 96 degrees. Holy crap. Wow. I'm gonna pour them in here, give some to RJ, some to me. Oh, there's a piece of bacon there. Okay, so I'm going to start the beans first. Let the hot dogs keep cooking here. Let me turn around. So, this is the first for me. Maybe first on YouTube. Beans cooked by a mine fire. We got up to 96 degrees. Oh, perfect. It's not steaming hot. There is steam coming out because it's cold out. It's nice and warm, but not so warm that it's going to burn your mouth. It's like a perfect temperature. What do you think? I not good. It's just enough. Yeah. You're not burning your mouth or anything, but it's not cold. So. I think if we left it longer, too, we'd probably get a little bit higher, but I'm not complaining at all. You know, we left about about a half an hour, just enough time. Yeah, I mean, if you were out in the wilderness and you needed to eat, it just and you had this opportunity, it, it seems like it would work for you. Yeah, it's a pretty good alternative for um, in a pinch if you were to come across this area, you know, and you want to get some food that's nice and warm without having a stove or a heating element. I'm actually pleasantly surprised. Can't wait to see how this beef stew turns out. Yeah, we're going to be eating pretty good today. We got beans. Enough hot dogs for a few each and the beef stew. I might have to come like with a shovel and stuff, make myself a nice little platform here and <laughs> come do this regularly. Bring some other foods. I 
All right, I'm part of the Clean Plate Club. So there is the beef stew, courtesy of Dan from Altoona. Yes, thank you, Dan. We're gonna let you know how it is. I'm sure this one. Is this one. Ooh, looks pretty good. It's got peas in it. Oh, it smells like dog food. <laughs> <laughs> he gave us the wrong one. <laughs> Is that it? Wow, oh, I think I shortchanged you there. That's all right. Pick up the hot dogs. There you go. So here's the beef Thank stew. Hmm. All right, let's see how good this is. Meal ready to eat. Self-contained heating elements. Let me do a temperature reading actually and see if this is compared. 96 degrees. Well, his is 103 degrees, 99, 103. So we got some hot spots, but it's definitely warm enough to eat. I have a couple areas that are a little cooler than others, but overall, it's warm enough. Some decent chunks of beef in there, too. Oh, yeah. Potatoes. So that was a nice little bonus treat there. Good to know that it comes with everything. You don't need to bring your own water. It comes with a salt water packet that activates a heating element. It is a little bit time consuming, but again, you don't really need to bring anything but that kit with you. Everything is self-contained. So as long as you have the time to spare, it's a good alternative for bringing a camping stove or making a fire. So Works good I have two at home and I'll be hopefully trying them out pretty soon. Okay, moment of truth. We're going to pull out the hot dogs. All right, so as you probably heard today, son, make it and eat it. And it's, it's actually pretty tasty. It's not, it smells like dog food, but it doesn't taste like dog food. Okay, so I pulled the hot dogs out. We got a temperature of 88.5, which is pretty good. So I'm going to get some buns out here. All right, I got two dogs here. I am a mustard guy, so i load them up. Excuse me. Excited. Okay. Mine fire hot dogs. Only in Centralia. Whatever else. Underground mine fire. So there is one thing I forgot to do with these. I forgot to rotate them. So one end is really warm. The other end is kind of cool. That's my fault. I should have. Twist them around at some point, but that's okay. So if I ever do this again, I definitely will be conscious enough to rotate them around, get even heat distribution. So although the hot dogs are not as warm as the beans, they are warmer than they would be sitting out here in the normal temperature here, around 19, 20 degrees. So it's a learning lesson, you know. This is my first time ever doing this. And like I said, we mixed the beans around. I think that helped. It got even distribution of the heat. The whole thing as a whole, as a pot, got to around 90-some degrees. And like I said, one hot dog end was... 85 88 the other one was around 60 so can't complain though i mean how cool is it to eat food heated up by a mine fire so there is one downfall that i just discovered by cooking here at the mine fire vent you do get covered in schmutz <laughs> it's basically all the material that's inside there's all wet and slimy and gooey and if you get it on you, it doesn't want to come off very easily. So you got to be conscious of that. It's actually all over my gloves. I'm glad I wore gloves because my hands will be covered. And I have wet wipes in the car, but they're in the car, not here. But as cool as it is to use the heat, excuse me, the 
as cool as it is to use the heat from that, it is pretty messy. So guys, what'd you think? Was that a pretty cool episode to cook our food at the mine fire? I think uh, I want to do it again. I'm going to come up with some more ideas. This was just a first time run, a trial to see what was going to happen. And the beans came out perfect. I couldn't ask for a better turnout for those. Just the right temperature and they were, you know, evenly heated up all over. And the hot dogs, like I said, due to my fault, I didn't rotate them to get the other side heated up. But they were still enjoyable and it was a great little experiment and adventure here down here near Centralia. I do want to thank RJ for joining me and for providing the beef stew meal, which was overall enjoyable. It was a little complicated to get things situated on how to cook it, but overall it was worth the effort. We got to have I'm just slow at reading. three different food items here to eat and it made for a nice little afternoon here. On Even though it's cold out, it is an enjoyable time, especially where I'm sitting here. I do feel bad for him. On the tarp here, I'm sitting, my buns are nice and toasted. <laughs> the, heat, nice and the heat is just rising up, so I'm actually quite comfortable right here. But if you want to see more food-related videos, you could do two things. You could check down below in the description for my Chow Time playlist. And I also want to hear from you guys. Let me know what you thought of this little, I guess you could call it experiment, you know, this little one-of-a-kind cooking scenario. And if you have future ideas for, you know, returning here what else i could cook or what else you'd like to see out in the woods as far as cooking with anything i'm open to suggestions your input definitely helps guide me in the right direction for future content so anyways don't forget to check down below the description for his video you can see up close and personal what he did on his end i just covered some of the highlights over here and lastly if you did enjoy the video or any part of it or had a good laugh make sure to stay tuned for the bloopers but make sure to show your support by giving it a thumbs up so with that said, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for joining us for lunch. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Bar. Game on! You're so smart. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Take 632. I think we have 633. Take 634. Wait, now I lost count. And behind me here is our cooking vent. This is one of about 12 vents here, as I mentioned, on the mountainside, just on the outskirts of Altoona. Oh my God. <laughs> Altoona curve. And that just came out so natural too. <laughs> B-roll.